Well, good day to you. It is April the 2nd, and I hope wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you're having a great day. My name is Gary Willing. I want to welcome everyone to Search for Signs. And as I always like to do, I just want to point out to those people who are new and you want to know more about this information, want to know more about my tray and the Masters of Wisdom, why they're here perhaps, or even if you want to see if there's any truth to this for yourself. Hopefully at some point you'll look into this and investigate it for yourself. I've included links in the description portion of every one of these videos that take you to websites that talk about this information. But if you want to know the best website to go to that has the best background information, it's the link at the top, the Share International site. So hopefully you'll look into that. If you want to come back and join the discussion, you are, of course, welcome to do that. And I always want to thank everybody who has commented and thank, and uh, asked questions since the last time I put a video up. But the way to get your questions to me or your comments to me, just post a comment in the, in the comment section. Let me know what you think that way, of course. But you can also post your question in the comment section. And then I'll try to answer it in the next video. Or you can email me at searchforsigns at mail.com. All right. Now, Ray, what did you have to say? Gary, read Jesus' last prayer before arrested, John 17, 20 through 26. I think it sums up your statement on oneness well. And in fact, without even reading it yet, because I'm going to take a second to switch over to the Bible app, I can already tell you, if Jesus said it and it wasn't written in there by somebody after him and he actually said it, it was about oneness. Everything that Jesus talked about was about oneness when he was alive. Now, the, the problem is... Um, that a lot of it was written in after Jesus, you know, had already gone, right? So there was a lot of things that people added to what Jesus said. But let's read what you have to say and then, or what the prayer that Jesus, that you want me to read that Jesus said, and then we'll talk about it. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Thank you. That's wonderful. Um, but getting back to, the, to Jesus and what he you know, talked about and so forth, the, everything that Jesus said in the Bible, or supposedly it said, or attributed to what Jesus had said, let's say, that is divisive or excludes people was written in there after Jesus had already gone by someone. And it creates confusion within the minds of the reader because you're reading at some points, he's talking about love and unity and oneness. And at other times he's talking in a very harsh, critical way, very divisive way. That is, I think, a person put in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not what Jesus said. So, and there, and then you and then you kind of, the problem then is compounded upon the fact that not only is there a lot of distortion in the Bible, but what we might be thinking that is said is not actually what the meaning of what it is it's supposed to have been said, right? So then you got the person who is reading it, their own take on it creates whole other issues too, right? Now the good news is, in the not so distant future, I don't think it's going to be right away. But Maitreya will eventually start to introduce these masters one by one after he's out known for who he is in the world. Right now, Maitreya is not known for who he is. He's out in the world somewhere talking to people some kind of way, but they don't even know that it's him. They're just seeing him as an ordinary person, which is fine because he's just talking about what humanity needs to do. We need to share the resources of the world, perhaps bring about justice, bring about peace. So it's really not so much about the spiritual religious side as of yet, right? It's more important to save our us from ourselves and not destroy our planet enough to where we can't live on it because then what's the point right so that's kind of where we're at right now but once he's out known for who he is he will start to introduce these masters one by one that master jesus will probably be the first that he introduces of this group of masters now then i think it will be a while it might not be right away before the religious groups especially the christians uh trust not only Maitreya, but the Master Jesus enough to where they start to ask him for, their, for his advice. 
And, you know, I think at first the majority of the Christians will have to go through the process of, you know, that's a demon, that's a fallen angel, that's um, the Antichrist himself. You know, they're going to go through this whole process of uh, the five stages of grief, I guess, of their own, um, the death to their own dogmas before they realize that really they mean us no harm and that they're here to help us and that they can eventually trust them. It might be a while, but once they do, they're going to ask the Master Jesus to help them. It might start off with a simple question. What does this verse mean? You know, what did you mean by this? And he might say, yes, I said it. No, I didn't say it. I, I meant this. I didn't mean this. What you guys, what people have been thinking for centuries is not what I was saying. Or some, I don't know how he's going to pose it. You know, the closest that I could, I would say that he would probably come to in terms of shining light on biblical verses is when Ben's master does that very thing in a lot of the articles that that you will read if you read uh, Benjamin Krim's master's articles. From time to time, he'll throw in a biblical quote and talk about its meaning. And it's always about love and unity and oneness. It's never divisive, you know, ever, you know. And so, but that's, I think, where where humanity will start to awaken to the truth and the true, the real truths within the Bible will come from that more than um, humanity itself trying to mentally understand what it's saying. There's too much distortion in the Bible for us to really get to the heart of it, you know, and eschew all the, it takes an exceptional person to be able to do that, to be able to get to the heart of, of what is said in the Bible and really understand what the true meaning of it is and not get turned around by all the distortion in it at the same time. But thank you very much for, for your comment. And every time you comment, Ray, I really do appreciate it. Now there was um, another comment from Anthony. What did you have to ask? You said, this is a, this is a question. Is there an overemphasis on seeing an outward Maitreya at the expense of recognizing an inner Maitreya? Are you talking about the inner Christ principle, perhaps, you know, then no, there isn't. Because here's the thing. All these changes that are coming, right? The master is coming back into the everyday world. Humanity awakening to the truth that we are one and those kind of things. Is humanity prepared for what's to come? No, I don't think we are prepared, but we're ready. And the reason why I say it like that is because Maitreya himself talks about the hearts of humanity, what's within the hearts of everyone, without exception. doesn't matter how awful the person is in life. You know, within their heart is the longing for oneness and unity. He says it without exception. It's within the hearts of every one of us. And it's starting to waken up to, the, to that truth. All our hearts are. Now, some people's hearts are still closed to that truth, but... For the most, you know, for the most part, it's it's opening up within the hearts of humanity. So, it, as a humanity as a whole, the heart of humanity is starting to open up. I guess is a better way of saying it. There'll always be those people that will come up the rear. <laughs> you know what I mean? But as Maitreya, even unrecognized as Maitreya, when he's speaking to humanity, however he's doing it, whether it's to a tiny group of people in a room, to maybe on TV or in the media or whatever he's doing. It's having the effect of wakening the hearts of humanity. And if you look at what's going on in the world today, you can see it. From, if you're looking at it from that perspective, you know, you kind of shed the fear of what's going on, of the uncertainty of the future, and you really look at what, what's happening to humanity, how we're reacting to the situations of the time. We're see, you're seeing humanity waking, waking up to the truth that we are one. And as every American is guilty of doing. I'm about to be guilty of it too. I'm going to I'm going to bring it back to the shores of America, right? The political divisions, right? Which are happening all over the world. But let's just talk about the ones in in the United States because you know if you look if you talk to an, somebody from the United States, if it happens in the United States, it's it's more dangerous, more powerful, more important than it is if it happened in let's say um Madagascar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean it's just they don't assign that, that um, importance to other countries. It's always about the United States. So I'm, I'm kidding, but I'm being, I'm, be, I'm being satirical at the same point. But anyway, or at the same time. But anyway, my point is 
there's political divisions in the United States like there is everywhere else, right? And right now they're pretty pronounced, right? If, but if you look at the groups of people on the right and the left, they both want different things, but they're both crying for divine uh, principles. You know, one is crying for freedom, the other one's crying for justice, you know, and it's the awakening of, of the hearts of humanity. On the right, you know, their rhetoric, their, um, you know, their, their, their rhetoric and their, what they're, what they're fighting for and how they're fighting for it is divine, but yet it's kind of twisted and kind of warped in a way, right? So then you look at what's going on in the left, crying for justice and equality, right? Uh, economic or ecological justice and those kind of things is a divine thing that they're fighting for, but yet they're just as twisted up and made into a pretzel as the ones on the right are right now. I'm not talking about the political leaders. I'm talking about the people, right? The, the political parties, both sides, the Democrats and the Republicans are both corrupt and are both getting paid from the same corporations you know, and that's the reason why we have the political problems that we have. But the people are awakening up to the truth that we are one. They might not understand the other side. They might not even like what the other side has to say. They might even dehumanize the other side. But they are awakening up to the truth that they have a political voice, for one. That voice should be heard, but they're, what they are fighting for is divine. They just need somebody to articulate what's really going on within them and not have it be a corrupt political figure such as Trump try to articulate it. That's the problem. Once Maitreya articulates it, it's going to harness and focus that in a way that we can't possibly imagine. But Ben's master talked about the awakening of the, of the people to politics and the political will of the people a few decades ago. And we're seeing it happen now. But those divisions are a direct result of humanity waking up, is my point. <laughs> but anyway, but now here's the other thing. Okay, now, the, that awakening, you know, to, to the truth within the hearts of the people is not enough. We need examples of what it is that we're aspiring to. That's going to help us in a way. As a humanity, it's going to pull us back from the brink of destruction. Each of us individually, it's going to inspire and galvanize millions of people once they see these masters, how these masters interact, the love that they have, the joy, the wisdom that they'll, they'll bestow upon humanity freely, right? Without expecting anything in return, just giving it to us freely. It will inspire and galvanize millions of people all around the world for change. It will bring a new lovingness to the world in a way that, in to humanity that we can't possibly imagine right now. We're on the, it's on the tip of everybody's tongue, that longing for unity, that longing for one. It just needs somebody to speak it out in the way that, that only Maitreya can. But it's not just Maitreya, it's also these other masters. When we see each and every one of these masters out in our lives, how they interact with each other, how they interact with us, how Maitreya will interact with the lowest, most uneducated members of humanity and the richest, most pompous, arrogant assholes that you could possibly imagine. You'll, he'll, he'll love them both in the same way. And we'll see exactly how we can be because they are us in the future or in, the, in potential. You know, that's how we will be in the future is how these masters are. It will galvan, like I said, it will galvanize humanity. Millions of people, you know, will be galvanized in a way and inspired to reach that, what they've always aspired to reach, which is what these masters are. It will, it will, it will, it will galvanize them into action that we can't possibly imagine. And just hope and pray that you're one of them and one of those people. Because <laughs> I think that everybody who's listening to this channel is one of those people. Because you wouldn't be interested in this information in the slightest if it wasn't already starting to awaken within your heart, too. You're just not hearing, the, hearing this information coming from one of the masters. You're hearing it from an ordinary person. But once you hear it from Maitreya, it's going to have a much different effect on your heart and, your, and open your mind up in a way that, that Gary can't do. <laughs> but anyway, hopefully that makes some, some sense to you. Now... Wild Humans 8116. There was a lot of information about, a lot of comments about Sasquatch and Bigfoot, I guess. 
And that reminds me, my favorite t-shirt I saw uh, just the other day, it was a, a silhouette of Bigfoot and it said, believe in yourself even when no one else does. <laughs> I love that. But anyway, so your question to me, uh, I have been, a, you said, hey, I've been abducted by aliens on two separate occasions, but don't remember much. Should I go through hypnosis to remember more? Uh, since you're asking me this question point blank, I would, my answer would be don't waste your time or your money. Is that simple enough for you? <laughs> so anyway, why would I say that? And this might be something that you totally disagree with, and that's fine. According to, to my information, according to the information that the masters have, have already given about what they call the Space Brothers, not aliens, is that there is no truth to any stories about abductions. Not one truth to it. These space, these space Brothers are are harmless. They know nothing but love and joy, just as these masters do. And they would never do that kind of harm to somebody else and abduct them against their will. That is a crime against another person. They would never do that because they know that if they did harm them in that way, that harm would come back to them. What you sow shall shall you reap. They live that truth perfectly. That's why they are who they are. You know, they've been taught that from the cradle, from their very cradle, to, to live like that. They're here to help, human, help the masters teach us to live in that exact same way. When the truth comes out, really tr comes out about these UFOs, we will see that we have n nothing to fear from them because they've been here the whole time. Had they wanted to take us over, they would have taken us over centuries ago. And they have never taken us over. Why? Because they don't mean to take us over, right? They don't have to abduct anybody and, and perform experiments on them because they know more about our anatomy than we do, or any doctor does. Just as these masters know more about what it means to be human, human than, than we do. But they will be teaching humanity more and more about the nature of humanity, the masters and these space brothers. The relationship that we have with these space brothers is they are our elder brothers, but they're not from our own planet like these masters are. They are from the higher planets in our solar system. They're not from another dimension. They're not from another galaxy. They're not from another whatever. Time, they're from our own time, but they're from a higher level of physicality known as the etheric. So according to uh, the Ageless Wisdom teachings and that science, there are not just three levels of physicality, solid, liquid, and gas. There are four levels above that known as the etheric which makes seven levels of physicality. On the etheric planes are where this, these humanities are on their own planets. And they come here on a spiritual mission to help us. Mainly now they are here helping us clean up our own environment. Because if it wasn't for their work and the work and activity of the UFOs, tirelessly day in and day out cleaning up our atmosphere from the pollution that we're doing, the harm that we're doing to the environment, I would say we would either be all dead nearly dead or wishing we were dead because everybody would be so sick that it would be just an absolute hell to live in if because of the pollution that we're doing. And the only reason why we have remote normalcy is because of the work and a tireless work of these, of these space brothers. Cleaning up our atmospheres, you know, day in and day out, moment to moment to moment, and, and until we learn not to do that very thing. Now, the, the other comment you said about people freaking out about the truth about the UFOs, I don't think that's true anymore. It might have been true 50 years ago, but it's not true now because more and more information has come out about the UFOs. They, there have been more and more sightings of UFOs, more and more t discussion about UFOs to where it's, it's really quite normal to talk about. It's not so taboo, you know? And even to where I would say... 40 years ago, you would have never read anything about this. But a few years ago during the Trump administration, I think it was on, if I'm not mistaken, it was either 2019 or 2020, that there was a, a couple little articles in some news services, you know, um, but mainstream news services, not, not fringe news. And it, it was that it was informing everybody that... Um, some high levels of the Pentagon were meeting with and briefing members of both houses of Congress and the president himself, which at the time was Trump, 
about the nature of UFO activity. Why would they do that if, there, if they didn't think that there was any reality to it? Not one person would ever do that, would ever put their career and their reputation out there like that if there was no truth to what they were saying. Now, of course, Trump, in true Trump fashion, said that he didn't deny the meeting. He denied that he didn't believe that there was any truth to the information of UFOs. Whether it was his own hubris or he was totally lying about the fact that, that he didn't believe it, I don't know. It doesn't matter. But the cat was out of the bag. They were talking about it. Right? And they were talking about it because it's becoming more and more normalized. Now, I would say if you lined up 100 people, uh, what, 50, 60, 70% of the people would probably say that, that UFOs existed. The other, the other 25 or 30 or 40% would say that they didn't, right? Which is probably pretty normal. But out of that 50 or 60 or 70% of the people that do know that they exist, they don't know where they come from. They don't know why they're here. They don't know the purpose. They don't know if they mean us any harm or anything like that. But in time, they will, we will all eventually know the truth because Maitreya is going to say this, is going to be asked this question. You know, uh, do these, what's going on with UFOs? Are they real? And he'll say, yes, they are real. Where are they coming from? They're coming from our own planets and our own solar system. These are going to be the words that he says. In only the way that Maitreya can say it. They're not, he's not going to say it exactly like I say it, right? But he's going to speak the truth about who they are, that they mean us no harm, that they are humanity from our own sister planets, and they've been here since the dawn of time, and they've been helping humanity through our evolution and will continue to help us. In fact, uh, to take it a step further, they will eventually give us the same technology that they use to build their ships, to, to power their cities, to power their ships to go from one planet to another in a matter of minutes. It takes them just a few minutes to go from Mars to Earth or, you know, Saturn to Earth or whatever. Just a few minutes. Probably like a drive across town, almost. And that's how fast they can go. But they, they do it clean, and it's a clean and very efficient technology and so forth. It's called the technology of light. But it can be very destructive and very, very dangerous in the wrong hands. So humanity will have to prove over time to Maitreya that we have put war behind us forever before that technology is given to us. But eventually it will be given to humanity. And it will totally revolutionize life on planet Earth. Everything from our, the way that we build our artifacts to build our, our cities, power our cities, transport ourselves to even our medicine will all be transformed by this energy this technology of light coming from the Space Brothers. We'll know more and more about their teachings, about who they are, about how their history on their worlds and so forth that we ever could know today. But it will, it's all, we're all waking up to the truth that they are here too. So as I say, there's three revelations that I think that will happen over the next 50 years-ish or so. One is that Humanity is not at the top of the evolutionary ladder on this planet, that there is a kingdom above humanity known as the masters of wisdom, and that we are aspiring to get into that kingdom, whether we are aware of it or not, through the course of lifetimes and so forth. We will eventually all become masters as they are masters. The other one is that we are souls in incarnation. That will be proven scientifically in a lab that can be reproduced in other labs by other scientists all around the world. That's going to happen in the not-so-distant future. And then the third one, like I said, we were just talking about, is that there's the truth about life on other planets, that we're not alone. It's going to totally revolutionize the way that we see the life in the universe as a whole and ourselves in it. You know, So we have quite an extraordinary future awaiting humanity. And that's why... It's exciting if you read this information, if you get into it and you really dive into it, it can really bring you a lot of hope, I think, because of the truth about the masters, the truth about ourselves, the truth about the fact that we will get through this very tumultuous time and those kind of things. But anyway, I love you guys. Thank you very much for your questions and your comments. I look forward to talking to you guys again in the future. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again. In the